Dark World is an archetype that many players have a love-hate relationship with, for it can be a rather frustrating deck to duel against, but it can also be a frustrating deck to play. The popularity of Dark World has ebbed and flowed over time, but a number of people still seem to have the soft spot for the deck, so what does my Dark World deck look like? Obviously the most important monster is Grapha, and all Dark World decks should always run three copies. Overall, there really is nothing bad about Grapha. Its primary Dark World effect is targeted destruction of opponent's card, which is valuable for its versatility. You can get rid of back row, in addition to pesky monsters that you can actually target and destroy. The secondary Dark World effect is also nice, as a majority of the time you get to take a monster from your opponent's hand and summon it to your field, giving you defense and depriving them of resources. Its 2700 attack makes it live with both deck destruction and eradication viruses, and it jumps to 3000 with gates on the field. The graveyard summons effect is by far and away the most important aspect of Grapha, and one of the main reasons Dark World is so annoying for opponents, because the ability to upgrade your attack power from any Dark World monster to a 27 to 3000 attack point graph at only the cost of returning the original Dark World monster to your hand is incredibly useful and powerful. Finally, with the easy to achieve innate special summons via Grapha's effect, rank 8 XZ summoning with multiple Graphas is definitely possible. Rain is a horrible monster in my opinion. Basically, a vast majority of the time, this card's just a dead draw. Lucent is a nice card as a solid 2400 attack single tribute with a standard special summon itself primary Dark World effect. Its secondary effect when discarded by an opponent's card effect is also rather useful for pulling out a Grapha from the deck, especially when a Grapha has not hit the graveyard yet in the duel. I run two copies. Latinium is just flat out bad and one wonders why it was even created in the first place. Silva and Gold are the two original boss monsters for the Dark World archetype, and thanks to the attack boost from Gate, both can do some effective killing at 2600 attack. I like running one copy of Silva for its hand return effect can be backbreaking for the opponent. Running Brow was commonplace back in the original versions of Dark World solely due to the lack of effect-based discarding elements that were available. Pretty much you had card destruction, morphing jar, and that was it. However, now there are more than enough better discarding cards to replace it, so sorry Brow, but it's the bench for you. The principal searcher of Dark World, Snow, needs to be run at 3 to ensure you get your major combo cards as fast as possible. The secondary effect can also be somewhat useful for getting up walls later, but there are better choices. I run two copies of Beige as the standard special summon no tribute element. A vast majority of the time, Beige will be returned to your hand for Grapha's effect to special summon Grapha to the field. Finally, with Gates on the field, Beige does jump to 1900 attack which can kill some things as well. Brow is another no tribute Dark World monster for Grapha summoning purposes, along with Snow and Beige, as well as a deck thinner. However, its secondary effect is really not that useful to self-trigger, as there are much better choices. However, due to the importance of getting combo cards in this deck, especially Grapha, it's important to run three Brow. Scar cannot search Grapha, and has to be destroyed as a result of battle. Next card, please. Both Khaki and Gren are rather worthless now. They were almost begrudgingly run in past Dark World decks before Grapha came into existence. Now, they're completely irrelevant. Unlike a lot of Dark World players, I actually like running Ceruli, for it provides an easy means to trigger the secondary Dark World effects, and is seldom a liability in the hand because of Grapha. Oh, I have it in my hand, well I can just normal summon it return it back to my hand, bring out Grapha from the graveyard. Overall, I think people have forgotten about how devastating either Silva or Gold's secondary effect can be in the right circumstances. Also, Lucian's effect, which helps you bring out Grapha from the deck, increasing your overall consistency, and it can even be used with Brow and Snow if so desired. I run two copies, and it really, it's not a bad card to run. I think it's just one of those cards that kind of got a bad rap initially, and people forgot that it actually can be useful in the right deck designs. Three copies of Dark World Dealing is basically mandatory in any Dark World deck as an important draw and effect trigger engine. When you have a Dark World Dealings in your hand, typically things will work out in your favor. 
Dark World Lightning is an interesting side deck card when facing down back row heavy decks, but I skip it for main deck purposes because face down monsters are rarely an issue in the modern meta, and Dark World decks are not that bothered by non Mirror Force family back row, and obviously your opponent can chain to Dark World Lightning, mitigating its usefulness completely. Gateway to the Dark World is an oldie, but it's not bad in the sense that because it's quick play and has no statistical restrictions on the monster, the lack of summoning condition is not a huge detriment. But while there's little wrong with this card, I choose not to run it because Grafa's innate special summoning ability is just so useful, it takes some of the pizzazz out of Gateway. Grimoire is out of theme and really not worth the time. The Gates to the Dark World is a must at 3 as another key draw and effect triggering engine. The plus 300 attack is also rather important for maximizing your higher up monsters, making Silva and Gold 2600, Lucient 2700, and most importantly Grapha 3000 so it can do some effective crashing into other 3000 attack point monsters. The one major problem with the Forces of Darkness is that it only collects monster ca not cards from the graveyard. If it got Dark World cards from the graveyard, it would be much better despite being a trap. Heck, it would probably overcome the, co the limitation of being a trap, but that's not the case. Obviously, one of the critical elements in a Dark World deck is to ensure enough discarding power, but based on my design of this deck, I only run one copy of Trans Archfiend for both discarding and banished monster recovery. You'll see why when the deck's finished. I also like running two copies of Battle Fader, because Grapha is a consistent big hitter that typically gives you the advantage over a series of turns. Fader prevents those OTKs that reduce the effectiveness of Grapha. For the final monsters, there are, are basically a litany of choices. Tour Guide from the Underworld is a popular choice because it searches Brow, which can either set up a Grapha Summons, or you can go into a Rank 3 play, or you could get Skarm if you choose to run it, or something else for searching. The problem I have with Tour Guide is that getting Brow is not really valuable to me. Tour Guide in large respects can become dead when you run out of level 3s, which definitely can happen in this deck, especially with the way this build is. However, despite these concerns, I still do run that allowable one copy because it's more useful than detrimental. Another option is Skarm to search Brow off, the disc off of the discard, typically leading to a plus 1. However, this strategy is too one-trick pony for my taste. You can also run Archfiend Eris to search out Trans Archfiend. If I ran either of these, I would prefer Eris over Skarm because I feel Trance is much more valuable for deck efficiency than whatever level 3 you can get with Skarm. I don't run it in my main deck, but I side Knight Dragolich to deal with Cosmos and extra deck based decks like Pendulum, especially when you go on the attack. Some people probably like running Fabled Raven for mass discarding and synchro summoning, but I feel there are some efficiency holes that I don't prefer, especially because you have to use your normal summons to put Raven on the field. Finally, I like running two copies of Fiendish Rhino Warrior, for it is useful in two major respects. First, it's a secondary Foolish Burial, which is important because getting Graph into the graveyard is pretty much priority number one for a Dark World deck. Second, it offers a layer of protection as a 1700 attack point monster with gates that protects other fiends from battle and card destruction. Spells I run one copy of Regeki because it's Regeki and Dark Worlds can swarm very effectively. I don't run Soul Charge because of the lack of a battle phase. Some people might argue that's not smart because you can put two Graphas on the field, make a rank 8, I understand that, but when I used to run Soul Charge, it just typically did not work out in my favor. Let's just say that. One copy of Allure of Darkness because Trans can grab banished card, that banished card and deck speed is important. One copy of Foolish Burial to jump Grapha or Fiendish Rhino Warrior to the graveyard. The reduction of upstart from 3 to 1 is an interesting quirk for this deck. Without the ability to run 3, I really don't like running the single copy, so no upstarts for me in this deck. However, I do run one copy of One Day of Peace in case of a dead draw to help stall out a bit until I get the cards I need. Time to announce me, I guess, as a scrub. 
I'm sure some people will say that after this next card because I run two copies of the Cheerful Coffin. For me, Coffin is actually a nice card because it allows up to three discards to produce a glut of advantage without requiring that summons from something like Fabled Raven. Because when you have all of those Solemn cards running around, Raven can be a liability because when it activates effect, oh, Solemn Strike, well, I'm in trouble. Coffin also allows effective navigation of opponent's back row because each Dark World card activates as a separate part of its chain, the, the Solemn Family will only be able to shut down what you want it to shut down. Basically, in my eyes, the Cheerful Coffin is the closest thing Dark World's going to get to card destruction. Yes, Cheerful Coffin is grossly inferior to card destruction, but still, it's the closest thing Dark World's going to get, in my opinion. Finally, one of the biggest problems with Dark World is that it has a little nuance. It is basically just a beat stick deck with a few more tricks to get those beat sticks on the field. The problem is that the meta has passed it by in the fact that its bully nature is not really effective. It can't stand up to Cosmo, and it really can't stand up to Mega Monarchs. Therefore, to run an effective and competitive Dark World deck, I believe one has to run Solidarity for that extra 800 boost makes the deck an effective bully once again. I run three copies because in my opinion getting solidarity is important to win against the big time competitive decks. While the extra deck can conflict with solidarity somewhat, I have not had a lot of confliction between solidarity and non-fiend extra deck monsters. With that closing the spells, note that obviously I don't run any copies of Drag Down to the Grave. There are two major re problems for Dra Grave in this build. First, obviously running Battle Fader significantly kills the efficiency of Grave because if you activate Grave with Battle Fader in the hand and a bunch of other Dark World monsters, take a wild guess what's getting discarded. Second, the opponent has to have a card in hand, and therefore if the opponent has no cards, drag down is worthless. If the opponent knows you're running Dark World, there will be some extra incentive to make sure he or she is handless as much as possible. If because they're going to suspect you run Drag Down to the Grave. Finally, for the traps, I run one copy of Solemn Warning, one copy of Skill Drain for Dark World monsters evade most of the negatives associated with Drain, and one copy of Eradicator Epidemic Virus, which is easily activated via Grapha or a beefed up Silver or Lucian, and can be rather devastating to certain types of decks. Deck Destruction Virus is also a nice side deck option. Note that I don't like running curry bandit because i think it's too slow also it can have a tendency to leave an open field because it consumes your normal summon i don't like mind crush because i care more about making my plays rather than trying to prevent my opponents from making plays and the discard the discard aspect of mind crush is too slow because it's a trap finally i don't like running mass change 2 because it's too inefficient for the deck and Dark Law is not as good in this meta as it has been in past meta. For the extra deck, the larger number of dark monsters run in this deck allow for some more versatility in the rank 4 options. I run one number 95 Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon, one number 107 Tachyon Dragon, number th 38, one Heretic Sun Dragon Overlord, one Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand, one number 39 Utopia Beyond, one Photon Strike Bouncer, one Castell, one Dark Rebellion XZ Dragon, one Evil Swarm Nightmare, one Evil Swarm Thanatos, one Gaga Ga Cowboy, one number 30 Acid Golem of Destruction, one Levier the Ski Dragon, and one Wind Up Zamanis. In my opinion, the in the current meta, the major advantage of Dark World is the high probability of having the field presence of at least one 2700 attack point monster. The problem is that Dark World cannot produce the level of big play consistency that other decks can, especially with Eradicator Epidemic Virus limited to one. It can always make that Grapha play, but beyond that, its playmaking is questionable. Therefore, the best strategy for me has been to play with a defensive intent, limiting the opponent's ability to end the duel quickly, and then just grind them down with Grapha. Well, that's my Dark World deck. Thank you for your attention and your time. I'm out.